Welcome to the St. Paul Forum. I'm John Forty. This week we'll be talking about solar energy. We're here at All Energy Solar to learn more about how to apply solar energy to the household level. We're in the conference room at All Energy Solar, and I'm here with Brandon Charbonneau, a solar consultant. Brandon, yes. how would I know if my house would be right for solar? It's a good question. So when we're looking for uh, a valuable site for solar, I'm looking for things like good southern exposure on a roof or um, in a field. Um, and we're looking for trees to not be shady in a project so we can get the, the best value uh, out of the solar system and, and get the most production from that. And now there's currently like a federal uh, subsidy, correct? A, a tax credit? Correct. And that's driving out the, the tremendous boom that's going on now. And I know you guys are hoping that the boom continues after the credit. That is ends. correct. But, but tell me about the metrics. I mean, what, you know, you basically like a third of it is paid for by the credit? Correct. Something like that? There's a, uh, currently there's an investment tax credit. It's 30% of a project. So if we're doing... Uh, whatever size of project, 30% of that would come back to us through, uh, through this tax program. Uh, that program currently is available through the year 2016 uh, for residents. After that, it's set to expire unless uh, Congress decides to continue that incentive. Okay. Now, in television, generally, arithmetic is death. Yes. But let's talk <laughs> about the numbers. I mean, um, you, you're selling panels, and a, house, a panel is about five by three and a half, something like that? Four Correct. by six feet? Okay. Three and a half by five and a half feet. Three and a half by five and a half. And a typical house gets 10, 20? Yeah, it's certain average neighborhood um, in like a Minneapolis, St. Paul area, we're looking at from anywhere from you know 16 to 24 panels uh, is a typical project in that range. Um, and for that you know typical project, we're looking to offset 60 to 100 percent of someone's electric bill, um, and that's what we're looking for in a good project. Okay, that sounds really good. That. But it is possible to offset more than 100% and drive your meter backwards, correct? That is correct. Okay. So isn't in, that the holy grail? Isn't that what you guys are really pushing? <laughs> uh, essentially, a lot of times what we're working on is offsetting our, our footprint with our electricity. So everyone that has an electric bill right now, we're, we're, we're paying out that money. Um, and it's nice to capture that. With the, the advent of solar technology, we now have the capability to produce energy on our own site and offset our footprint with electricity. In months in the summer when it is really sunny, uh, there is days at the noon hour where we are selling that energy back, we are spinning that meter back, and we can collect a check at the end of the month. Okay. So each of these panels produces about a kilowatt hour per day, is that correct? So yeah, and, um, if you were to take average project, if you group four panels together, we're getting a, a kilowatt to a kilowatt and a half uh, per day that's produced on that. Okay. And is that the same as a kilowatt hour that I pay for, what is it, seven cents? On your Excel cents? bill. Yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, one of these panels will power an outlet for an hour. That's correct. Okay, that's a very straightforward, simple way of thinking of it. Brandon, a lot of people have a prejudice that Minnesota is not a good place for solar because it's cold, but is that true? Um, actually, the one benefit that we do have is it is cold. Um, the equipment we're installing is electronics. Electronics inherently like to work better when it is cold, so um, that's where we actually do see some of our peak performance on our solar systems. Uh, Minnesota, on average, has about 270 sunny days. Um, if that's you know similar to places in Texas and Florida, so we do have a good exposure. Uh, countries like the country of Germany actually has 25% solar on their grid, and they are further north from uh, where we are for latitude, and it is cloudier there. And they have been able to roll out solar in a big way. And if it works well there, it'll easily work well here. So both high latitude, being you know farther to, to the pole, and clouds are, are working against solar. That's correct. Okay, which is why it took off early in in Southern California, of course, like that, and it's come here. But it, in many ways, it seems to be a better fit here. Correct. So we are um, we are seeing some great benefits because we have great sun, and with XL Energy, um, they've got goals for the year 2020 uh, to have a certain amount of solar on the grid. So they're helping uh, to uh, fund projects and get going and, and cleaning up our energy sources and moving away from coal. 
Okay. Now, when solar first came out in like the 70s and there was kind of a boom, you know, about the time you were born or before that, it was, it was just heat. It was, it was water pipes on black paint, basically. Correct. To, to me. And these are photovoltaic voltaic cells. Yeah. So Tell me about them. With these cells, what we're doing is we're actually, um, the panels are absorbing the sunlight and they're um, creating some chemical excitement. And what we're doing is we're creating electricity. Uh, so these um, electrical systems, the solar panels are integrated directly into our home. And what we're doing is in, we are producing the energy that we are, the same energy we're using in your home, we're now providing it with solar power. Um, and then if we're not using that energy in the home, what we're doing right now with laws in the state of Minnesota like net metering is we're selling it back to the utility. So we are spinning that meter backwards. Okay, and you can also, from what I understand, store some in batteries. That's correct. Okay, do you sell in batteries here? So right now, the, the, the battery par, uh, marketplace, it, batteries are an expensive proposition. So um, there is companies like Tesla that are driving down the prices of, uh, of batteries, but with laws like net metering, we can sell back that energy. We don't need to store it on site. Um, in the next five years, the next 10 years, we will see a big uh, surge in battery technology. So we can store that sun power that's produced during the day and then use it overnight. Okay. What do you find people most like about solar? I mean, you're, it's, in essence, you're the first contact of all energy. You go out and meet people and are people buying out of ecological reasons? Are they buying for economic reasons? How does that break down? Um, the biggest driver actually would be economics and solar provides that independence uh, where you know, we do now have a choice of where our energy is coming from and we're also getting that economic benefit of saving money on our, our month over month electric bill. Uh, and then underneath all that, most people do appreciate that this is a clean technology and they are doing their part for the environment. Uh, but economics is a huge player in it. Okay, and the price of batteries is, seems to be dropping continuously. Is the same true of the photovoltaics? That's correct. So in the last 10 years and, and since the 70s when some of this has started rolling out, we've seen a heavy decline on the, um, the price of it. And that's also including, um, also with that, on top of the local incentives from XL Energy and also with the 30% tax credit, uh, we've really uh, seen solar become an economic decision first and foremost. Okay. As best as we can on public television, tell me the advantage of like speed. If I, if I make the decision today, and put what, 10,000, 20,000 into the, and it can be financed, I'm sure. How soon is it up and running? So for a typical project, we're looking at a three to four month turnaround. So, um, you know, first step in the project is I'm coming out to your site and taking measurements and reviewing our sun access. If things look good from there, we're discussing the economics of the, the project. Um, from there, we're working with the local city to get local permitting. We do building permits, electrical permits, and then we also work with our electric utility for interconnection. So there's some paperwork process. Um, closer to the end of that three month period, we're arriving on site, we're bringing the panels, uh, we're getting it up. Um, you know, a typical project for installation takes one to two days for us to install the racking and the panels. Um, after that process is complete, we meet a couple more inspectors and then we're flipped on. So three to four months typical for, uh, for an average project. And, and that's a a, a fairly paperwork intensive and we're going to be talking to Cindy here shortly who Correct. holds your hand all the way through those steps and then later we'll be talking to Brian, one of the owners of the business, about uh, solar in a broader sense. Correct. Okay. Cindy is one of the biggest assets. She, she's, uh, she carries us through the paperwork. Great. Well, Brandon, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. I'm with Cindy Larson O'Neill, customer liaison and project coordinator at All Energy Solar. Cindy, you don't know it, but you are the linchpin that runs this whole organization. You hold the customer's hands from the moment they agree to do this until it's up and running. And you make people feel good about the process because there's a whole bunch of details and you have the face that says sign here. Some people just sign and others probably grill you to death on details. Mm -hmm. um, what part do you like best? It's um, kind of fun because you get to do a whole variety of things and I love meeting the people and most people have a lot of questions about solar and so answering the questions and addressing any concerns they have, it's part of an educational kind of a role since this is new to so many people. Um, but then also getting down into the nitty gritty and just handling the details and following up on the details and moving the paperwork through the system with the interconnection and the permitting and then finally getting the meter out and turning the system on. So two key considerations for customers, I'm sure, are number one, the tax credit, and number two, getting that meter to go backwards when you have a nice sunny day. 
um, and you're helping people through that paperwork process the entire time. Are they roughly equal in difficulty or how do you find them? Well, the federal tax credit is something that the homeowner would do when they, their taxes are due. So they would file their paperwork with their tax accountant and take the rebate at that time. Um, as far as the interconnection um, rebate that would be with Excel or with another utility, they will all have their own special pa paperwork that we would do. Um, and sometimes there's a lot of pieces of paper that need to be done depending on the utility and sometimes it's not that many pieces of paper. Um, so it kind of depends on where you live, who your utility is, and same thing for permitting. Um, some building permits are more detailed and um, there needs to be planning meetings and conditional use permit meetings um, in townships, for example. So it really depends on where you are and um, who your service is. So Cindy, people embark on this process and they meet you to handhold them from essentially beginning to end. And there's a design process. You have in-house designers here to help people figure out where to position their panels to get maximum efficiency as well as aesthetics and be out of the way you know, for convenience factors. Tell me about that process. That's exactly right. Um, the first thing that we do after the project is handed off from the sales um, consultant is to, um, I will meet with them and schedule an engineering site visit and we will have a tech go out and gather all the data um, on their roof and uh, in their attic and with their electrical panel, um, gathering all the data they need to build the system. So all that data will be gathered and it will come back to the designers. And the designers would design something that is a preliminary layout like this. And this is a fairly s simple layout, but it'll show the customer's house in a 3D form and how the panels would lay out then the customer would have a chance to look at that and make any changes or make any talk to the designers and find out if, why they did it that way. But that's a really interesting process because the designers are looking at um, the measurements of the sunlight hitting the roof in all the different parts of the roof. And they're also looking at um, forecasting for shadowing through the day and through the seasons. So they can actually put the panels exactly where they know the best production is gonna be. And once the panels are installed, it seems like they're maintenance free, but do they occasionally fail? Do people call you if there's a problem? How do you, how do you deal with that? They can fail, and it seems like if they do, they will have it, it'll happen right in the middle, beginning when we turn the system okay. on and we find a faulty module. And in that case, we would just come out and swap out the module right away. Um, the panels are under warranty for 25 years, mm -hmm. and then our company has a five-year warranty as well. Um, so they're very sturdy. The um, top of the panel is glass, so a lot of people ask about, do I need to wash it or clean it or do anything? And they're really low maintenance and they're very strong. So usually not too much of an issue. So on those rare instances that happens, that's generally a manufacturing flaw. But let's talk about acts of God. So a tree falls on it and it's just insured as part of your house. You just need to call your homeowner's policy and, and let them know that you've made an additional investment? Is that how that works? Right, exactly. So customers will call their insurance agent and they'll tell them what they're doing and usually the insurance agent wants to know the total cost of the project and then they will factor that into their insurance policy. So it's I, what I've heard is that the city of St. Paul has kind of streamlined this sort of process to make it easier relative to, to other cities. Mm -hmm. Is there any special zoning variance or anything like that one has to get? Um, I believe that in the city of St. Paul, this is a better question for Brian, but um, any tilt-up um, styles, mm -hmm. there is extra engineering required for that. Um, but otherwise, um, it's pretty straightforward. And they do, they are pretty streamlined. What kind of uh, demographic are, are buying this? Is it old people and young people? Is it ecotypes? Is it bean counters? Who are you educating? It's amazing the variety of people that are my customers. Um, I have a 90-year-old customer who is thrilled to do solar and turned on and everywhere she goes she takes her utility bill and her purse and she takes it out and she shows all her friends and she so shows them the credit that she gets every month. So she loves that but we have young couples, we have single parents, we have large houses, small houses, the whole gamut. Are there any considerations as far as families go? I mean, do things are up high enough, the kids aren't climbing on them and that sort of thing? 
No, as far as I know, that's never been a problem. And the thing that really interests kids, and I've seen this, is where the solar begins operating and you, you are, would be able to log on to a website and look at your production and look at your usage and you can see it live. So often the kids will get involved and they will go around the house and turn off lights and watch the usage go down. And so you're producing more solar and so it gets the kids into a relationship that they understand between the usage and conservation and production in your own house, that you are your own power plant. What's it like doing the back office stuff in a booming business? Is, is your workload double every three weeks or something like that? We are incredibly busy. And so to keep track of um, all kinds of customers and all the details for all their project, it's a challenge. But um, we uh, have a sales force in place and um, we have other people in the office that can help and we have a really nice um, computerized system that helps us track everything. So it's pretty smart. Okay. Well, Cindy, thank you very much. It was really You're a pleasure. You're welcome. Thanks so much. I'm here with Brian Allen, Vice President of All Energy Solar. Brian, what's the easiest way to think of the numbers for solar? Sure. You know, an average homeowner uses anywhere from 7,000 to 10,000 kilowatt hours in a year. And so that's the first number that we really look at when determining how much energy you need to, uh, to produce with solar panels. Um, we then have to take in all of your, your site-specific information. Uh, every home is different. Every house has different orientations, different trees growing trees. in the yards, <laughs> lots of different things that we have to take into consideration. So we start with how much energy you consume. Mm -hmm. uh, that gives us then the, the size of the system that you would need to produce, let's just say, 100% of the energy that you need. Uh, then we start looking at uh, the design constraints, which are going to be shading from trees, available roof space, the orientation and pitch of your roof. Um, and then we look at budget and verify you know, how much are you willing or able to spend on such a project. Uh, and, and finally, we, we consider you know, the aesthetics and curb appeal of your home. Uh, we want to make sure that what we're designing and putting on your property is going to look good as well. How much do installations typically cost? We, we see prices average anywhere from 15000 residentially all the way up to even sixty or seventy thousand uh, dollars but your average price is right around twenty to twenty five thousand dollars and that's amortized then by driving your meter backwards yeah over five years ten years well you know a good way to look at it is um, how much do you spend on electricity in a year right now let's say that's a thousand dollars and if you took that and continued to just pay money to the utility company what value do you get out of that um, other than the convenience and, and uh, luxury of having electricity on a pretty consistent basis, that's about it. Uh, with solar energy, you, you pay to produce that electricity yourself. And ultimately, you're going to pay for that once. And over time, as the cost of energy increases, the value of that energy that you're producing increases as, along with it. And so with other incentives and ways of, of um, reducing that upfront cost, we can see financial paybacks pretty quickly. Uh, and by pretty quickly, you mean three, four years? Um, in some cases, five years, and uh, in other cases, as long as 10 or 12 years. Uh, it averages out right around six or seven years. And do people do it in staged fashion, where they would just do, say, a quarter of their needs or something like that, and then do a quarter again in a few years? Yeah, you know, normally what we try and do is, is design based on the available space that we have. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and most homes don't necessarily have enough roof space to cover 100% of the energy that they need. Uh, if they do, that's usually the most cost-effective way of doing it because anytime you can scale a project and do a bigger project to start off with, we can bring our prices down um, as an installer and as a, a company. So scale and uh, economies of scale come into play every time we're looking at uh, projects. The smaller the project, the larger the upfront cost is going to be per kilowatt than a larger project. Now tell me about the evolution of the business. How long ago did you start? Sure. We, uh, my brother and I started this business uh, at the end of 2009. Prior to that, we had been working for solar companies all across the United States. Um, I was working out in California. My brother was working uh, with a company in New Jersey, both kind of running offices out there. 
understanding the industries. Uh, the entire time we kept a pretty close eye on what was happening in Minnesota, uh, our, our home state where we grew up. Uh, and, and it was always our dream, I guess, to, to bring this industry back here. Uh, and when we saw that the finances and the, the economics around starting and running a business in Minnesota with solar energy um, made sense, that's when we decided to come back. It, it seems to me that the, the one product that would make an enormous difference in the long term of this is batteries. What's coming on ba the battery front? You make a really good point. Um, energy storage is uh, kind of the next big market that uh, a lot of the industry is seeing. I don't know if you follow anything with the electric vehicle market. Elon Musk, the owner of Tesla uh, and SpaceX, um, He's, he's also big into solar panels and into batteries, uh, and he's making a big bet that uh, batteries for homes and that energy storage component um, is going to be a big push. And we feel the same way, uh, but we are also um, realistic on the cost of those right now uh, and the longevity of those products, as well as the, uh, the recycling and uh, reusing ramifications that come with using a lead acid based battery, we want to make sure that if we're going to use a product that um, it still is safe for the environment. So. Now tell me about your motivation. Are, are you an eco-terrorist or what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are, are you primarily ecology driven? Are you a business guy? I mean, you seem to have a nice community of people that it's a comfortable place to work. Is it all of those things? Tell it, me, you know, it what's is. in your guts? Sure, no, it, it is a passion though. Um, and, and it's a passion built around um, an upbringing that mm -hmm. taught me to respect the planet and and respect nature and uh, and to do everything that we can to preserve it uh, and so that's that's uh, I have my parents to thank for that um, as at an early age they got us involved in in Boy Scouts and in, in hunting and fishing and camping and and all of those things and and I, I want to be able to continue to enjoy those mm -hmm. those parts of our planet and and as well as pass that on to my child so Brian, ecological power in the age of digital information, you can really monitor what's going on with your panels. Show us what you got going on here. Sure. Um, something that we've uh, had implemented since we started our business was um, online monitoring capabilities. Uh, this is not only for our purposes, but for our customers as well. Um, what's really nice about the monitoring piece to our business is that our customers can um, engage in their own energy consumption as well as how much energy their panels are producing. Uh, it, it's, it's really used as a tool to help you understand energy mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, see it on a minute by minute basis versus seeing your one month electric bill and going, gosh, how did I use that much electricity? This allows you to know. And so this is an example of a, of a project where um, you can see two different colors on the graph here. We've got the red and the green. The red represents the electricity that the home is consuming. And this is over a three day period. And so anytime it's see, you see it filled in with red, that means that the home was consuming electricity from the utility company, buying that electricity mm -hmm. basically. Um, uh, looks like we came up to the, the daylight here at around 6, 7 a.m. and the solar panels that this customer had started producing electricity. Um, it wasn't a full sunny day, looks like we might have had somewhat of a cloudy day, but within that 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. window, the customer pretty much produced all of their own electricity with solar panels. And then anytime you see it filled in with green, that means that we actually sold energy back to the utility company. So uh, in that one day period, um, there's a good chance that the amount of energy they produced and fed back allowed for a credit for the energy that they consumed at night. Mm -hmm. So they could be net zero within that 24 hour period. Um, the really neat thing that we like to show is, is the ability to kind of adjust this view to see your all-time history um, and, and drop into maybe just the most recent last hour mm -hmm. um, as well as drop in and actually see your energy consumption on a 10-minute kind of window. Mm -hmm. And so if this customer were to come home right now and was really interested in having a piece of toast and they threw a piece of bread in the toaster mm -hmm. and they turned that toaster on, 
we would be able to watch right here on this graph the energy consumption skyrocket by mm -hmm. about a kilowatt and a half. That's mm -hmm. how much electricity a toaster actually uses, some of them more, some of them slightly less. But it gives you that instantaneous understanding around electricity. And on top of that, I can now check the production of this solar array and verify it's operating correctly and do that remotely right from my desk. And so when customers have questions, they call in, we pull up their monitoring, we're able to answer it right there over the phone. Now I've seen this on a phone. Is there a mobile app that gives the same information? There is, and this is just one of many platforms okay. that we use. Uh, and so there's, there's mobile applications for it all, so you can see this right from your phone. Mm -hmm. um, I have a customer who owns a Tesla, and the Tesla has a, a large monitor within the, within the cabin of the, the vehicle, and they pull up their e-gauge monitoring on mm -hmm. that all the time. Um, and they use it to specifically see how much electricity they use to charge their electric vehicle. Um, as well as to see what their solar panels are producing. Okay. So it's a, it's a unique product, yeah. Um, I want to learn more about the sun itself, and I don't want to sound like an idiot, but the sun must be, what, twice as big as the Earth? <laughs> okay, it's, it's massively bigger than the Earth, and it produces an incredible amount of energy, but that energy takes eight minutes to get here. Why do I have to wait that long? <laughs> <laughs> it is a long time to wait for that light to hit the yeah. Earth. Okay. Um, but when it does, it's really powerful. Uh, enough sunlight hits the earth uh, on a daily basis to power the entire United States, if we were able to capture mm -hmm. that sunlight. Um, it, it could power the entire world. Um, and, and you're in the capturing business. Yes, I am. <laughs> and, and, um, and, and we're really excited about that. It's, it's a source of power that um, I don't think is ever going to burn out in our, our time uh, on this planet, and hopefully to ever. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, it's an it's incredibly powerful source of energy. Um, I could get into the nerdy talk around it and, and really tell you all well, about it. Well, speaking of the nerdy talk, the thing we should probably close with is, where can people learn more? You, you put your phone number there, don't do that. But I mean, yep. is there a website yes. people can learn more? Allenergysolar.com, spelled just like it sounds. We're, we're a company that believes in providing free information. Um, it doesn't hurt to just look into this. Um, you never know unless you, you actually look into it. And to do your own research um, is great, but the internet is not always honest. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, check out our website, um, fill out a form, let us come out to your home for free and provide you with an estimate for solar energy. See if it's the right fit for you. That's the best way to find out. Great. Well, Brian, thank you very much. It's really been a pleasure. Good, Good to chat with you. Thank you so much. So what we've got here, got an array with uh, 27 panels, and they all get tied together and then run down through some conduit we've installed in the garage, inside the garage, and, and comes out here into this switch here, all the DC side of the, the, of the array, goes through the inverter here, which converts it to AC, and uh, right now we're putting out about 5.6 kilowatts. And then it comes up out of the ground here and you get another disconnect. Um, then it goes through this production meter. When it's all said and done, there'll be a, a, a meter here. So it goes, once it gets to this point, it, any power generated will get used by the house and anything excess gets sold back to Excel. So you use anything generated first Anything left over, which I'm guessing, based on the meter spinning backwards here, you're going to probably be generating quite a bit. Um, that gets sold back to Excel.